This video was brought to you by Squarespace. Last year, I flew on Scoot's Boeing 787 from Berlin to Singapore, a low-cost flight that went on for 12 hours and is certainly quite a bit more than most people are willing to do on a low-cost carrier. But how about 5 hours? 5 hours is a bit more realistic, isn't it? It's also a lot more common. Ryanair's longest route goes from Warsaw Modlin to Tenerife South, clocking in at up to 6 hours. And Wizz Air's longest route at the moment is Abu Dhabi to Vienna, taking slightly less than 6 hours, and will be topped by Abu Dhabi to Milan when it begins this July. So today, let's take one of those mid-haul flights on Wizz Air, not quite as long as Abu Dhabi to Vienna, but still easily taking 5 hours from Vienna to Damam, Saudi Arabia. Let's get into it. Hello and good morning from the commuter train to Vienna airport. My name is David and welcome to this new episode of our review series Brutally Honest. We just arrived here at the airport to catch our flight down to Saudi Arabia on Wizz Air. The country is fairly new to Wizz Air's network, having just started flying there last year. As of April 2023, Wizz Air offers flights to Damam from Vienna, Budapest, Rome, Tirana and Abu Dhabi, and flights from Lanaka starting in July. To Riyadh, they also fly from Budapest, Vienna and Rome, as well as from Bucharest, Catania, Milan, Venice, Naples, Lanaka and Sofia. And Wizz Air also flies to Jeddah from Bucharest, Budapest, Milan, Rome, Venice, Vienna and from July from Lanaka. And then they also have a route from Abu Dhabi to Medina. Check-in for low-cost airlines like Ryanair and Wizz Air is different than for legacy carriers. They make you check in online and bring your boarding pass with you to the airport, either printed yourself or as a mobile boarding pass on your phone. If you want to check in at the counter at the airport, you have to pay 13 euros when you pre-book this service online, or when you pay at the airport, it comes with a hefty 40 euro fee per passenger. But if you fly to Saudi Arabia, you can't check in online because airport staff needs to physically check your visa and for those passengers, the fee is luckily waived and they got a separate line at Vienna Airport. By the way, for European Union citizens, getting a visa to Saudi Arabia is very easy, as it can be done online in no time. It just involves an unusually high fee. They only offer a one-year multiple entry visa, which is 355 Saudi rials plus another 180 rials for a non-optional insurance on top of that totaling 535 rials or around 130 euros. That's certainly the most expensive e-visa I have come across. It's more than half of what I paid for the flights. Including one checked bag and seat reservations, my ticket to Demam came out to just 253 euros return, which is a phenomenal price. Our plane to Demam has just touched down here in Vienna after already having completed a rotation to Naples, Italy. We're flying aboard HALZT, a brand new 2022 built Airbus A321neo. Wizz Air is the world's largest operator of this type, currently having 83 of them across the airline group, with new ones being delivered almost every week, as they have a backlog of almost 300 more on order. Vienna Airport has removed the jet bridge from one of the parking positions at their non Schengen terminal to cater to the complex schedules of low cost carriers. These airlines often have flights that arrive from European countries, like ours, which arrived from Naples, where passengers don't have to go through passport control and then depart to a non Schengen destination like the MUM, where they do. By not having a jet bridge attached, you're flexible as you can provide buses for either arriving or departing passengers to avoid passport control, but don't need a bus a second time as you would with a remote stand, which lowers turnaround time and cost for the airline. Parked right next to us is one of Austrian's Boeing 767s, which is about to depart to Washington, Dulles. Having booked the package deal with a checked bag and seat reservation, I also got priority boarding. To speed up the process, these A321s are often boarded using both front and rear stairs. After all, this plane is packed to the brim with seats, having 239 of them installed, 5 seats shy of the maximum allowed for this type, which is 244. In comparison, the Boeing 767 of Austria next to us only has 211 seats. 
the aircraft features the standard 3-3 configuration found in economy class on all A320 family aircraft, with my friend and I seated in row 27. New Wizz Air aircraft feature one of two seat models, either Recaro's SL3710 seat, which the manufacturer's CEO has shown to us in detail last year at the Aircraft Interiors Expo. Or they are equipped with the Azenza seats made by Italian manufacturer Javen, which we have on our flight. The Javen Azenza is also the current model that is being installed in new short-haul aircraft of the Lufthansa Group Airlines, albeit with more features. Naturally, no adjustable headrests are installed. Well, the legroom could honestly be even worse, but being 180 centimeters tall, it's actually less awful than I feared. Each seat comes with a standard seat back pocket, as well as a small tray table. And there are even coat hooks. In contrast to Lufthansa Group Airlines, Wizz Air, of course, did not opt for USB or power ports. As we are pushing back and getting ready for departure, we are passing Eva Air's Boeing 787-9, which is being prepared for its 12-hour flight to Taipei. And pushing back as well over there is China Airlines Airbus A350, also heading to Taipei. We recently flew on this flight as well with a brutally honest episode coming soon, so make sure you are subscribed to our channel and won't miss it. Now we're getting ready to depart south from Vienna's runway 16. After takeoff, you could spot parts of Slovakia's capital Bratislava through the clouds. The crew of this flight operates both the flight to the MUM and the one back, resulting in a very long workday, with quite a bit of downtime during the flight with just nothing to do. That's why Wizz Air crews sometimes reseat passengers from the last row to other rows so the crew can use the last row as a slightly more comfortable alternative to the tiny jump seats in the galleys. So make sure to not reserve seats in the last row on such long Wizz Air flights. Let's take a look at the in-flight magazine. In contrast to legacy carriers, low-cost airlines still often have in-flight magazines to promote their bundle fares, earn extra money on advertisements, as well as for the buy on board menu. Here you can see Wizz Air's three standard bundles where I went with the Wizz Air Go bundle, which includes both a small and large cabin bag, a 20 kilogram checked bag, standard seat reservation and priority boarding. You don't have to pay for the bundles though. You can also individually add which services you need, but bundles often just offer a better overall deal. Wizz Air also cleverly earns extra money with their bonus club program. You basically pay an upfront annual fee of 30 euros and then get a 10 euro discount per ticket and 5 euros per bag. So for it to make financial sense for you, you have to fly Wizz Air at least a couple of times a year. This membership model also exists for groups, like for families, and there is a discounted version if you just want to use it for domestic flights within Italy. A very low cost style, they even list the fee they are going to charge you if you behave so badly in the air that they have to divert the flight. So keep your cool if you don't want to let go of up to 80,000 euros, that's almost as much as what you have to pay if they discover a check-in that your cabin bag is 2 kilograms too heavy. Like any other low-cost airline, Wizz Air also offers a variety of snacks and beverages to purchase on board. This ranges from cold sandwiches to instant soups and pastas, which I think are quite reasonably priced actually. 
A whole bunch of alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages as well as snacks are on offer too. And Wizz Air also carries snacks typical to some of their destination countries on all of their flights, which I think is pretty cool. And I also always appreciate an airline that sells airplane models. Very cool Wizz Air. I also kinda dig the socks, but I'm not willing to fork out 30 euros for them. What I ended up deciding was worth it for me is a cup of instant carbonara pasta and a Red Bull. The epitome of a healthy lunch. Obviously it isn't, but it kinda feels illegal to make Lufthansa miles off of an in-flight purchase on Wizz Air. To be honest, the carbonara pasta was surprisingly good. The rest of the flight was pretty uneventful, although the evening lighting over Iraq was beautiful. The lavatories on these A321s are tiny. There's barely enough space to sit down, and one of the reasons why the crew didn't want to sit on the jump seats is that one of the lavatories is hidden behind a jump seat, which is why the door seems so thick. On the seats, the armrests can be removed, but the seats themselves do not recline. In-flight Wi-Fi is also not offered on any Wizz Air flights. After a bit more than four hours, we started our descent into Damam. And I have to say the flight was okay. It's much more bearable than a 13 hour flight on Scoot. But then again, I had a free middle seat next to me today, which certainly improved my experience a lot. For the price they charge, I'm honestly not able to complain. 253 euros return, including a checked bag, seat reservations and priority boarding? That's a steal. Nevertheless, the flight was anything but comfortable. Cramming almost 240 people in an A321 just results in a very crowded space. And because the seats don't offer a lot of space themselves, people constantly got up or even stood around the aisle for an hour at a time, which I found a bit bothersome. So when you come across such a deal on Wizz Air, be prepared to sacrifice some comfort for the price, but rest assured that it's absolutely doable and I'm ready to travel on them again if the price is right. Thank you. With that, thank you very much for coming along on this trip. I hope you enjoyed it and will join us again on another journey next week. And special thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is a powerful online platform from which you can create your own website. Whether you want to start a blog, showcase your business, or simply share information, Squarespace gives you a wide variety of base designs to start off from and plenty of tools to manage your website, such as the possibility to provide gated members-only content or to send email newsletters and leveraging audience insights, all in just one easy-to-use platform. Create your own community with Squarespace's fully integrated commenting system, powerful blogging tools to draft, schedule and publish posts, where you can even embed your own social media posts as well and thus direct your website traffic to your own social media accounts. And provide the world with your own product creations by using Squarespace's built-in inventory management, product promotion and bookkeeping systems. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash simplyaviation for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain name.
Thanks to viewers like you and sponsors like Squarespace, we're able to continuously increase the variety of airlines showcased on our channel. And we have many more to come. I'll see you on another one of those flights again soon.